In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so for today, um, we'll continue our discussion sa ato ang module 1. In the second part of our video, we've discussed about the principal divisions of criminology, including the factors that enhance the development of the, the human behavior or criminal behavior of human beings. Aside from that, we've also discussed in the second part of our video about the major areas in the study of criminology. Take note that with regards to the percentage, can you see 15%, 20%, and 10%, this is the allocated percentage in the board exam when uh, wala pa na amend ang Republic Act 6506. But then again, as what I've mentioned, as of now, we are already uh, using Republic Act 11131. <coughs> so our as what I've mentioned, Republic Act 6506 is an act creating the Board of Examiners for the Criminologists in the Philippines. Later on, in 2018, Republic Act number 11131 was enacted, also known as the Philippine Criminology Profession Act of 2018. So this act was approved by our dear president, 
Rodrigo Roa Duterte. So it is an act regulating the practice of criminology profession in the Philippines and appropriating funds thereof, repealing for the purpose of Republic Act number 6506, otherwise known as an act creating the Board of Examiners for Criminologists in the Philippines. Aside from that, under Republic Act 11131, we've already, uh, the law itself provided for the um, accurate definition of the word registered criminologist. So, kinsa mani sila? A registered criminologist is any person who is a graduate of the degree of criminology. And aside from that, pass the examination for the criminologist and is a registered as such by the board. Unsay buot pasabot. If you will take Bachelor of Science in Criminology and then you've graduated, but unfortunately, you did not take the board exam or you took the board exam, but you did not pass. Meaning to say, you cannot be addressed as a registered criminologist. But you can only be addressed as a graduate of criminology, but not registered. The moment that you will pass the board exam, the licensure examination under Republic Act 11131, and if you will pass again, that's the time that you can be addressed as registered criminologist. If you will ask me, ma'am, what if I will take the NAPOLCOM examination and makapasar ko, will I be considered as a registered criminologist? The answer for that question is still an O, no. Still, you will not be considered as registered criminologist. Remember that the NAPOLCOM entrance examination is a separate internal examination of the Philippine National Police. And remember, what is requirement under Republic Act 11131 for you to be considered as a registered criminologist is that you've graduated and you have passed the examination. Other than that, cannot be. Another, criminalist. So this refers to a person who is trained in science of application of instrument and methods to the detection of crime. So kinsa may matawag na criminalist na to? Those trained in forensic chemistry and toxicology, those trained on medical legal examination, those trained in fingerprinting, they are considered as criminalists because the line of job and the quality of training they've received is in line with criminalistics. Sorry for that typographical error. Criminalistics or again, instrumentation. Remember that criminalistics or instrumentation is an important aspect in the field of criminology. Because in criminalistics, this is the part wherein it is very useful in providing a vital scientific evidence that will help elucidate the crime itself. And aside from mga fingerprint technician, kanang atong mga polygraph technician or polygraphist trained to conduct a lie detection test, they are considered as criminalists. Same as those who conduct a ballistic examination, a ballistician or ballistic examiner, criminalist. Okay, so as long as their field is under criminalistics and they've again acquired rigorous training, they are considered as criminalists. Okay, so before proceeding to the last slide, let's discuss further about Republic Act 6506. <coughs> okay, so now let us understand kung unsa may kalainan. But um, before I may forget, let us first uh, um, 
distinguish the difference between re uh, repealing an act and amending a law. Para for you to really understand kung unsay kalanginan between amendment and repealing an act. Okay. So, unsa kalainan nilang dua? When you say amendment, um, it refers to a change made to a previous adopted law or motion. It is a formal or official change made to law or contract or even in the constitution or other legal document. However, when we say repeal, it is the removal or reversal of law and is generally done when a law is no longer effective or it is having negative consequences. Again, no longer effective. So for now, I will give you a good example with the application of amendment of laws and repealing of laws. So a very good example for an amendment is we do have Republic Act 85. Okay. So, Kani. Uh, please wait. All right. So, All right. So, um, advanced information, guys, cadets. Ang first nga balaod that was created, ang first nga balaod that was enacted nga nag-create sa Philippine National Police, it is Republic Act 6975. Uh, during the time of Marcos, wala tayong gitawag na PNP. Ang naa nato is the Philippine Constabulary. The PC or Philippine Constabulary INP. So our PC INP or known as the Philippine Constabulary Integrated National Police, okay, became the um, national force and local force of the Philippines before during the time of Marcos. So to make the story short, when um, former president, late former president Corazon Aquino took place, okay, became the president, it resulted to the creation of Republic Act 6975. So if you will ask me, ma'am, what happened to those PCINP during the time of 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 um, Marcos and sa panahon nga si Corazon na ang nito over. Ang naitabo, those that were in PCINP, as long as they were qualified, they were given the opportunity to select whether to stay in the military, uh, military job or military nature na field or to join the newly created organization, which is the Philippine National Police, which was really created as um, national in scope, again, it was created part of its declaration of policy under Section 2 that it shall be in national in scope and civilian in character and that no element of police force shall be in military or shall in any thereof be occupy, occupied by an active member of the armed forces of the Philippines. So, katong na sa PCINP, 
Okay, katong na sa PCINT, they were given the prerogative, they were given the opportunity to choose as long as they were qualified. Katong wala ni qualified, gi pa retire, others were separated because they were not able to get at least the minimum requirement for the retirement. So, Motong under RA 6975, it was also mentioned that the general qualification in order to be a police officer during that time is that even if you are only second year college na naka-earn ka og 72 units, pwede na kang mahimong police. Yes, you heard it correctly. Under Republic Act 6975, 6975 chapter 3 okay creation of the philippine national police ang naitabo is that part of the uh, minimum qualification is that again bisag naka-earn ka ka og 72 units or second year in college pwede nakakaayong mahimong nara kong gingon pwede nakakaayong mahimong police okay Pwede na kang mga apply actually. And if you want to to be to have the commissioned officer nga nga rank, kinahanglan nga bachelor's degree holder ka plus with eligibility. So ang nahita po ato, giprofessionalize ang ato ang Philippine National Police. So our Republic Act 6975 was amended by Republic Act 8551. Unsa ganina sa word nga amendment, changes are made in the previous nga balaod. So meaning to say na aray certain provisions in Republic Act 6975 that was amended by Republic Act 8551. Our Republic Act 8551 is an act providing for the reform and reorganization of the Philippine National Police. And for the purpose, other purposes, amending certain provisions of Republic Act number 6975, entitled An Act Establishing the Philippine National Police Under the Reorganized Department of Interior and Local government. In short, the specific chapter of Republic Act 6975 that was amended by 8551 is only chapter 3. So, motong giingon sa definition, certain provisions of chapter are amended or changed. So, again, only this section ang gi, chapter rather ang gi amend sa 85 51. So a very good example na giusog niya, since ang ato ang Republic Act 8551, its main objective is to professionalize the police officer. Okay, under 6975, ang nangitabo was that even if you are only a second year college, naka-earn ka og 72 units, pwede nang pang apply. But then in Republic Act 8551, its main objective is to professionalize the Philippine National Police. Ang naitabo, it resulted also to the, the, uh, to the modification and improvement of the general qualification. Okay, let's see, let's check. All right. Okay. So what section of Republic Act 69 was amended by 8551? Specifically, Section 30. Okay. Kung sa may giingon sa Section 30, kung ganina 72 units, under uh, Section 14 of Republic Act 8551, ang kinahanglan na least minimum educational qualification for you to be admitted, for you to qualify as an applicant in the Philippine National Police is kanaanglan bachelor's degree holder, formal baccalaureate degree, in short, like a graduate of college. Aside from that, graduating in college is 
dili ran siya may requirement. Kinahanglan po, at least you need to have an eligibility according to the standards set by the commission. Kinsa man na commission ang gerefer ani, it is the NAPOLCOM or National Police Commission. So what are the various eligibility that can be utilized in applying sa PNP under 8551? First is that passing the licensure examination. Kinanglan, mahimo kang registered criminologist. Just for in case you were not able to take your licensure examination, you can also take the NAPOLCOM exam. Just for in case na wala ka nakatake o NAPOLCOM exam and criminology licensure examination, you can also take the civil service exam. So kung makapasar ka na nakai civil service eligibility katong professional, then pwede na kang mo-apply. Another, those ng mga registered nurses, licensed teachers, bar passers, pwede po ito nilang gamiton ilang eligibility in applying for the PNP organization. Yes, and that is true. You heard it correctly. Very stiff kaayo ang competition in the PNP organization. Why? Because even those students can graduate sa lawing courses, uh, they find the PNP organization and other law enforcement organization to be enticing. Enticing in a sense um, na ay security, uh, security because may mo na kang government employee, national government employee, and aside from that, dako na po ang swindu. So as of now, kung ma PO1 ka, murag mo total ka plus uh, your basic is 29,000 plus and this plus allowances mo full ka og mga 32 or 31,000 ka pin ang imuhang monthly. So see, and if you will compare at if you will compare it to other courses, so mas dagko jud kayo ang sweldo if you will join in the tribunal. Kung sa mga tri-bureau nga ako ang i-mention, I'm referring to the PNP, I'm referring to BJMP, and your BFP. Ganong ang ato ang PNP and BJMP are considered as a tri-bureau because these three organizations was were, rather, were originally created under Republic Act 6975. So 6975 is considered as the mother law of BNP, BJMP, and BFP. Okay? So muna siya example of amendment. So both pa sa both, if atong Republic Act 6975, eh, uh, gi-amend naman siya ko so RA... 9708. So, kani. Oh, lantawa. <coughs> Whenever a, an original law is amended, the moment nga ang ga amend na nga balaod, i-amend na po kusog, automatic the original and katong ni previously amend o kanang new balaod, both of the sections kinang lang i-appeal. So, like for example, Republic Act 9708. So, iyang gi-amend ang 85-51 and also 69-75. Mga utana mo, ma'am, ganong nalabot pa ang 69-75? Nalabot siya because it was not it was not repealed. It was merely amended by 85-51. So, just for in case that 97-08 in the future, usbo na po siya, i-amend na po siya. So, ang mapir na po diri, 69-75, 85-51 o 97-08 ang mga amended uh, laws. Inunana. Now, let's proceed to repeal. Usang may kalainan ng repeal? No effect ba itong giskot kanina? Ang buot pa sa buot, Anna, when you say repeal, ang kanang previous na balaod, dili, wala na siya legal effect. Like, for example, our example earlier was Republic Act 11131. So, if 
It was mentioned here nga ang Republic Act 11131 iyang gripil ang 6506. So ang may tabo, your 6506 dil wala na dili na siya effective. Kay giwala na man siya, wala na siya legal effect. So just for in case that Republic Act 11131 will be amended, ang may tabo in terms during the PITA, dili na nimo makita ang 6506. Automatic ang ibutang ra amending for the purpose of Republic Act 11131. Ngano again because your 6506 was already repealed by this law 11131. So therefore, there is no longer, uh, wala na siya, no longer effect, legal effect. Okay? So hopefully, nagkasinabot rata diyang napita. So in order for you to, to appreciate our new law, let us try to look at first the distinction between Republic Act 6506 and Republic Act 11131. So, under with respect to reciprocity under Republic Act 6506, only Filipino, those with Filipino citizenship, sila reporting mo take a board exam. But but in Republic Act 11131, ang naita po, even foreigners are allowed to take the criminology licensure examination. Provided, again, let me repeat myself, provided that the country, the foreign land, okay, will also, or the neighboring country will also respect our reciprocity. For example, ang ganahan rong mo take a board exam is an American or uh, ayaw na lang, Canadian. Example, ang ganahan mo take ang iyang nationality is uh, considered as a Canadian siya. So therefore, kung i-allow ka na nga foreigner na taga Canada to take the criminology licensure examination and benefit uh, and benefit all the um effects of passing the board exam based on the Philippine law, kinahanglan po that the government of Canada will also do the same. Will also allow Filipinos to take the examination and benefit on whatever or the nasulot silang balaod if ever they will take the licensure examination. So just for in case that the other country will not respect the reciprocity under Republic Act 11131, then that certain foreigner will not be allowed to take the board exam. Okay? Another, with respect to the provisions of 6506, which states that holders of bachelor's of law degree may within five years from the effectivity of this act, take the examination after completing at least nine to four units sa criminology, law enforcement, police science, penology subjects. So that is under Republic Act 6506. However, under Republic Act 11131, wala, um, iusob na siya. Kaya nga naman, ang pwede rang mutich of law subjects for Bachelor of Science in Criminology should be those lawyers na ilahang undergrad, okay, is criminology. And they were also able to pass the licensure examination. Pero there is a little exemption because the school or the university, like for example, COSCA, uh, as what is stipulated in Republic Act 11131, the university or the college is given the prerogative whether to allow the lawyer na in line sa criminology yang undergrad or daily. Katong in line, automatic na sulod sa 1131. For those, for example, lawyer siya, pero yang undergrad, it's HRM, business, so on and so forth. So the school is given the prerogative whether to allow that lawyer to teach law subjects, CLJ subjects, 
under the Bachelor of Science in Criminology program. Another, within respect to the refresher course under Republic Act 11131, which provides those, kani, those who failed five times consecutive or cumulative, pasunod or dili, basta kaniya butog lima, in the criminologist's licensure examination must present a certificate issued by a reputable institution duly recognized by CHED that such applicant has satisfactorily completed a refresher course. Yes, that is correct. Under Republic Act 6506, mura siya og anlirais. Nga naman, kanang ni graduate when ang gigamit pa was Republic Act 6506, unlimited taking man siya. Okay? So, bisag mahag mong kag ikalima, ikapulo ka mo take, no need, no need to present a certificate. But, since gi repeal na ning balaula, wala na ni siya ron, ang ato ang gi-implement is Republic Act 11131, ang nahitabo, ni graduate mo ka sa old curriculum, or ni graduate ka sa new curriculum, ang may tabo. Basta you will fail the board examination five times, pasunod or dili, you will need to take a refresher course. As a raput ka, pwede mo take a refresher course. Those institutions duly recognized by the Commission on Higher Education. So just for in case, pila man it's 24 units naman po na. After taking the refresher course, if you will file again sa PRC as a repeater for the licensure examination, you will need to present the certificate. If you cannot present, then you will not be allowed to file and retake the examination. Another to pass the licensure exam to pass the licensure examination for criminologists, a candidate must obtain a weighted average rating of at least 75%. Yes. Basta imuhang general weighted average karban total ni mo ba is 75% considered as pass na siya. But you need to remember na pa siya provided that no grade less than 60% in any given subject. 60%. So I will give you a very good um, example. Okay. Under Republic Act 69, I 11131, na ating defer. So this is a very good example para may bawan yung anus amo modifer okay so if we will try to, if we will look at the koan the the result of the sample computation sa board exam ni Juan kumulanta ta siyang general weighted average if we will base it on republic act 6506 automatic mo ingon juta nga pasar pasar kayo nga naman 86 good 86 good what is needed by the government is only 75. Pasar. However, wala naman ang Republic Act 6506. Ang naanaturon is Republic Act 11131. Ang giingon. Again, what did I mention? No grade. No percentage. Below 60. So, kinang lang 60 and up. So, lantawa. For Leia, that is 20%, ang young grade is 89. Pasal. Because that is above 60 and above mana siya. So for the criminal jurisprudence, equivalent 20%, nakakuha siya 89. Pass. Criminalistics, 20. 89. Pass. Criminology, uh, criminal sociology, 89. Pass. CDI, 89. Pass. However, pag abot niya o correctional administration, ang iyaharang result is only 59%. So in short, even if even if 86 ang nakabutang diri, pero naaman siya 59 below 60. 
result or percentage ang may tabo, si Juan, wala siya nakapasar. Failed siya sa criminology licensure examination. So, Diana, musulod ang at ko ang concept of defer. So, unsa may may tabo ni Juan, he will be asked to retake the area of the licensure examination nga nakakuha siya below 60. So, in short, he will need to retake the subject na correctional administration. Just for in case, nga si Juan, pag retake niya for the correctional administration, yung makuha gigan sa 59, mahimu ng 40, considered as failed lang yapon. So, you will need to retake again. Okay? He will need to retake. So, kung pag-take niya, makaabot siya 60 or up. So, in short, ang iyahang general weighted average here will become 86 point something or 87. So, makonsider na siya as as. Okay? So, manang kamo, you need to study good. So, bisan pag first year pa ta, you need to prepare yourself for the board examination. Kay lisud, nagkalisud na pagmaayo ang board karun because of Republic Act 11131. Though it is true, nagkalisud because bisag 86 de rin, pero nakakay below 60, you will not be considered as nakapasar. Pero ano siya po yung beauty? Ang 11131. Masa may advantage niya if you will pass the board exam. Um, those law enforcement agencies that has an existing internal examination, just like mga penology exam for, pino, for BJMP or fire exam for BFP, there's no need for you to take those examination. Automatic pasar mo sa ilahang internal examination. Okay, let's proceed. So what are the scope of the practice or opportunities if you will pass the board examination? Una is that pwede ka mo add to sa law enforcement administration. If you'd like, you can join the NBI. Pero before, I think that was way back 2000, pwede mo, mo sugot sila even if wala pa background sa law. At least ang iyahang GWA or general weighted average in the board examination is 85 and above. Pero karon, I don't know if such um, memo ni implement pa ba, pero ako na hibauan last uh, way back uh, two years na nagay that um, kinahanglan na kay uh, units sa law. Then, if you don't like to join the, P the NBI, National Bureau of Investigation, you can join the PNP. So, if you are a licensed criminologist, pwede kang mahimong commission officer up to the rank of superintendent. If you do not like the PNP, oy, pwede po mong kasulod sa PDEA. Aside from that, ang nakalami sa PDEA, ang height requirement is only 5. So, for those na medyo mubok mo po, you can join the PDEA. But if you're going to ask me, ma'am, is the PDEA same ba siya sa tribuno na double increase for the initial rank? Then the answer is no. Pero according to my student who is a PDEA agent, though they were not given a double increase like the police officers, the fire officer, the jail officer, pero naman po sila like tranches of increase. So later on, magkadaku na po ito mayo yung sweldo. So if you do not like the PDEA, you can join the BFP. You can also join the Bureau. Okay, you can also join BJMP. For those who are asking, ma'am, what's the difference between BUCOR and BJMP? Ang kalaina nilang dua uh, is that ang gihouse, okay, ang gibantayan in the Bureau of Corrections are those sentenced prisoners serving three years and above those that are considered as national prisoners. But with final judgment na naha, and ang gihaw sa tuang BJMP are those waiting for final judgment, 
those um, cases are repealed, those on trial, or those who are serving short sentences, like three years and below. If you do not like to join the BFP or BUPOR, you can also join the, pro, the PPA, the Probation and Parole Administration. Or kani, wapu kutni. I do have a lot of students who took the board, the board exam, nakapasar. They did not join this law enforcement agencies, pero nisulod sila sa Banko Central ng Pilipinas. Taku po kay sila sweldo. In fact, na sila um, what free one sack of rice in a month, na apod sila mga groceries, and their basic pay is also big. And another law enforcement uh, job opportunity ninyo is you can join the seaport. Okay? Seaport police. You can also join the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Labi na tong who are into ROTC, if you like. Or you can join the Bureau of Customs. Aside from that, uh, pwede pa kang ato o PCG. I do have a lot of students nga after completing 72 hours, uh, 72 units, I mean. Okay, mukuha din yung simutake din sa lag, uh, battery test sa Philippine Coast Guard. Then kung makapasar sila, dira sila pa din sa But I would suggest if you really want to become part of Philippine Coast Guard, you finish your bachelor's degree and you take the board exam first. Kay ani man guna siya. If you will join the PCG, yeah, wala wala mo kapasar o uh, wala pa mo ni take board, wala pa mo ka graduate, you can only apply for mga non-commissioned officer rank. Unlike dili pang official ba. Unlike with your unlike if you will pass the board exam and finish your bachelor's degree, you can apply for the commissioned officer rank. Pwede ka may mong opisyal. So, just for in case nga dili ka gusto sa law enforcement agency, you can join. As in the teaching profession, you can be a professor, instructor, or teacher in a university. Okay? But remember, if you want to join the academy because you want to impart knowledge to young minds, so you need to have your master's degree and later on your doctorate degree. Aside from that, you can also be a technician, criminalist, dactyloscopy ba imua, QDE ba, lie detection, par, uh, ballistician, uh, forensic photographer, or bisag unsang forensic sciences imong gusto. Pwede Japan siya. Or if you like, you can be a correctional administrator, executive supervisor, worker, or officer in any correctional or penal institution. One good example, Anna, is the provincial jail. But remember, unlike with your BUCOR and BJMP, you are considered as a national government employee. But if you will if you will apply sa provincial jail, dili ka national government employee but a local government employee because ang imuang salary is based on the grade provided sa ato ang governor so kung paguman ni mo og sa sa cream and while waiting for preparing for the board exam or unfortunately you did not pass the board exam or unfortunately you passed but still waiting for the quota sa other law enforcement agency, you can apply through the secretary of the governor. So presently, our governor is uh, Governor Digamo, so pwede ka apply But do not expect that you're, as what I've mentioned, dili ka national government employee. You are only a local government employee. So therefore, dili mo pari yung basic pay sa nagtrabaho sa BJMP, it is quite lower. But a decent salary ma po. Another thing, you can also be a counselor, an expert, advisor, researcher in any government or private agency aspects of criminal research. Yes. Pero in order for you to be a criminal researcher, you need to um, have an in-depth study about research. Another, if you like, you can also land as a private investigator, administrator, consultant, 
agent, detective in any private security or investigation agency. Then, um, preference of appointment in the government, criminal justice, and other government agencies. So for the registered criminologists, they shall enjoy priority of appointment and shall not be required to take qualifying and trans examination para sa NBI, PNP, BJMP, BFP, and LTO and any other government-related criminology profession. Mauni ako ang mentioned earlier. This is the beauty of Republic Act 11131. Why? Because there is no need for you to take the internal qualifying or entrance examination of the desired law enforcement agency. Automatic, it is waived. Another, and following the bureaus and agencies of the government, the Department of Justice, the Philippine Courts Authority, the Commission on Human Rights, the COMELEC, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Bureau of Immigration, the Department of Transportation, at Public Attorney's Office, PIDEA, National Police Commission. Okay? So those are your job opportunities and those, uh, uh, and those are the various job opportunities that you will have in the future if you will pass the board exam. All right, so if ever you do have um, any questions or clarifications, please comment it down so that I can include it in my next recorded video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell kay para whenever there are new videos, automatic man notify tayo. Okay, God bless everyone.